Hello everyone and welcome to Wally Mods and welcome back to the Factorio modding tutorial series. In this episode we're going to be going over locale files so you can add names, descriptions, instructions, and controls to your mods to let the users know how to access and utilize your mod. To get started we need to go to our mod folder and add another folder called locale. And inside that folder you're going to create another folder for each specific language that you'll be implementing in your lo localization files. For me, I'm going to be implementing English today, but you could also do French or any other language that you know. There's a list of existing names that correspond with languages out there already. For example, EN corresponds to English, FR corresponds to French, and so on and so forth. If you want to figure out what folder names you can use, you could go to where you downloaded Factorio in the data folder, then you go to the base folder, and then they have their own locale folder, which holds all of the languages that Factorio currently supports. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be looking at the documentation for the localization in the Factorio wiki and it has pretty much all the information you need today so we're just going to run through the basics of what it tells you. Once you're in your locale folder and inside the respective language that you'll be implementing you can go ahead and create a CFG file or a configuration file and this is where you'll be putting all of the data such as names and descriptions. You can name it whatever you'd like to it's just going to read every single file in this folder you can also have multiple files if you wanted to organize them for yourself. Now in a configuration file, there are these headers as I call them, and then there's the tags along with the values that these tags represent. If you remember correctly from last episode, we made an item in a recipe called Feather Armor. And the problem was, is that once we loaded up Factorio, is it didn't know what to put as a name there, so I just put the feather-armor that we defined over here in feather-armor.lua. However, what we wanted to do is instead of saying feather-armor, we wanted to say feather-armor like so. So a configuration file such as this one is basically a set of key and value pairs that the game can look up to find the respective information. Noted if you have spaces on either side of these, it will be included in the key value pair. So if you have a feather armor space, the game is going to look for a feather armor space item. And since we didn't do that, it will throw an error at us and our game won't load properly. Similarly, if we have a space before this feather armor, it's going to include that inside the name of the item. So here, I just set the item name feather armor and the recipe name as well. You can also add things to your configuration file which aren't exactly item names or recipe names but just general keys that you would like to use in the game or at other points in your mod. As an example on the left they have a key for format days and it's showing how you can use pluralization inside one of these configuration files. As you can see we have a key on the left side and then a bunch of gobbledygook on the right side. Breaking it down, this underscore underscore one underscore underscore represents a parameter that you can use in these localization files. And you inserted a value into this like when you do with a method or a function, you can handle how it will react to the input. So using this special key name, plural for parameter one, it's going to refer to the first parameter that you use. And if the value is 1, you want it to say day. But any other value, you want it to say days. In using this, you can see here, if you put the number 1 in, it's going to say 1 day. If you put the number 2 in, or any other number, it's going to use the plural in English, days. You can combine other text with this, so that it's not just printing out the one day or days. So if I bring this into my own file, I can say there are, and then it will have one day or multiple days. As you can see, in these curly braces, you can have other different types of 
options that will be implemented upon different types of inputs. So let's say the number ends in 12, you want to have it print option 1. If it ends in 2, I print option 2, and the rest just print option 3. Each of these options that you're defining are separated by a bar, which is also known as a bitwise OR. But that's not exactly important for locale files. At this point, you might be wondering how we will use localization files with inputs. What you can do is use it in game through the console, or you could modify it and use your localization through the control file or the control phase that you define in your mod. Here we can see it is used as so. If we use the game.print function, we can pass it a table with the key time left and then the value 10. Up here they define time left to be time left and then one parameter with minutes. So when it prints, it will say time left 10 minutes if we use this function call. It also works with multiple parameters, such as time left 10 minutes and 45 seconds, as we see down here. And as they noted, you can have the first parameter with a 1 and second parameter with a 2, and so on as you add more and more parameters to your key value pair. Another interesting way to use locale files is when you want to explain how to do something in your mod to your user. For example, we can have a key value pair, technology prompt, which tells us to use the button T to open the technology screen. That being said, a lot of users remap their keys and you won't be able to know when this happens or when it's not happening just by using a T. And you don't want to create different key value pairs for each possibility. So in the factorial modding API, you can use special predefined keys, as I might call them, to solve this problem. For example, if we want to look up which button opens the technology GUI, we can use this example here, underscores, control, and so on and so forth. We can also use this for items and entities. If we want to do underscores item, and then the name of the item with some following underscores. One last thing before I get into the in-game demonstration is you can also use alternate input names. So we have the control build for placing a building, which is the button that the character, which is the button that the player presses in order to place a building. When you use this key value pair, it outputs to you use left mouse button to place a building. However, there are more natural ways of phrasing that in English, such as left click to place a building, and it can be achieved by using the alternate control one build to place a building. There are only two alternate forms, one and two are available in English at the moment, but in some other languages they might not be available, and that happens on a turn by turn basis. The alternate 1 and 2 gives different tenses, such as left clicking and left click, rather than giving you the button which the player should use. Now that we've quickly run through the possibilities with this, let's look at how we can use them and implement them in our mods. To start with the demonstration, I'll quickly load up Factorio so we can see how our existing configuration file works. All right, I've loaded up Factorio, and now let's see what our current configuration file does while we're in game. Loading up a new game, I'm gonna go to our inventory, go over to our feather armor, and we can see that the name has changed for both the recipe and the item that the recipe produces, which is our very own feather armor. Now I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of how you can add interconnectivity with between your mod and the localization that you define in your files. I've loaded up the control.lua file that we worked on in a couple episodes ago when we were linking events to functions that we make for our mod. I'm gonna add one more line to this function on the entity place, which is going to use our format days with the input 20. So hopefully this will say there are 20 days. One thing to note is that we added a filter of a container type so that this will only happen when containers are placed. 
If you haven't seen this code before, you should go back and check out my events video in this series after you're done watching this one. Now that this is done, I'm going to load up Factorio again. In order to see the control script in action, we're going to load up a new game, get enough materials for a container, make a container, and when we place this container, it should hopefully say there are 20 days. And it does in the bottom left corner. Now as a counter example, if we were to place a stone furnace, we see that another message does not pop up underneath it, and that's because we had a filter to only filter out container type entities. If you wanted to see the predefined configuration files that the developers put in there, you can head over to where you downloaded Factorio. Again, I use Steam, so this is the file path. You're going to go into data, base, locale, like I showed you earlier, English. And if we look, take a look at this base file, we can see all the common items, maps, damage types, everything that has a name to it is here in this 1300 lined file. This is also a great place to look up what items or entities are named inside the game so you can use them in your mod. For example, if I didn't know what a wooden chest was called, I could do a search for a wooden chest. And you can see you have wooden chest remnants and then an entity name of wooden chest. Now I can utilize this wooden chest in my mod to do whatever I want to do with it as I so please. Taking a quick look at another language, you can see under the French one that we still have the same English key on the left, but we have a French value on the right. That's all for this video. I hope you're enjoying this series, and if you want to see more of it, feel free to subscribe to this channel. You can also follow my Twitter at Wally Mods to get updates of new videos being released and possible communication things that I use in the future. All the code for this series is on my GitHub, which I will link in the description. So if you want a closer look at that, you can go over there and use it as you so please. That's all I have for this video. I'll see you in the next one.